India's advancement in economic and social spheres is forging a new paradigm for global development. Make in India, arts are making the mark. We are enjoying a continuum of growth, progress and tradition. India is on the board. And with the unwavering certainty of a bold vision, we've propelled India onto an unstoppable path. Our economy is constantly renewing and reinventing, putting India in a globally enviable position. And a meticulously outlined political agenda will strengthen our regional and global clout. Presenting the fourth edition of the Times Now Summit, the confluence of leading policy makers, strategists, experts and influencers shaping India's unstoppable growth. Only on The Times Network. As far as India is concerned, we take our sports very seriously. In fact, to talk to us about evolving landscape of sports fan engagement in India, we are joined by a panel of experts. Thank you so much, uh, Meghna and Swati. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, about sports, we're going to be busting some myths about sports because the first thing that when in India, unfortunately, when you say sports, it's usually cricket. So here to get everybody's attention, let's start with a little cricket. Yesterday, IPL, highest score made by Sunrisers, uh, Hyderabad, highest cumulative score made by both uh, SRH and Mumbai Indians. But Vikrant, talking to you first, sports is no longer just cricket in India. And I know that at uh, Dream Sports, you're doing a lot of stuff to build the ecosystem. So two things. One is when you talk sports, sports ecosystem for the athletes. That's being done really well. The government is doing, there are a lot of organizations in it. Our panel is looking at the fan. Let's put the fan in the spotlight. So uh, Vikrant, to kick off, you can, if you can tell me a little bit more about what's happening under the dream sports umbrella for the, fan, for the sports fan ecosystem. Sure. Uh, thanks so much, Amit. Uh, great to be here. Uh, congratulations on hosting a great summit. Uh, the very fact that we are discussing sports uh, at a summit of this sort uh, means that it's becoming more mainstream in terms of just not just area of interest but also a topic of discussion. To your point about uh, sports fan engagement in particular, I think a lot has changed over the last few years. Uh, while the IPL is topical and it's currently on, you referred to the match yesterday which broke some records. But I think what we've seen in the sports landscape over the last few years is one, uh, is the emergence of the digital sports fan. You know, uh, the digital sports fan is, uh, is consuming more content, is con consuming it online, uh, has various platforms, formats, uh, whether it's live scores, content, streaming, uh, highlights, uh, uh, and is, is able to do that on the go. Uh, this digital sports consumption has also been enabled by a lot of changes in the ecosystem uh, thanks to m mobile connectivity and uh, better uh, you know, internet speeds, things of that sort. So I think that's one thing which has changed. Uh, from the other bit we have noticed is a lot of these uh, sports fans have turned from passive sports fans into active sports fans. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, they, they no longer want to just passively consume sports but have a point of view in terms of either fan following either at a team level, club level, league level, or even at the national level, yep. Uh, and that provides a lot of brands uh, uh, and uh, different avenues in terms of how they can engage with these sports fans. Uh, the third big trend that we've noticed is the emergence of what we call uh, the Bharat sports fans, you know, tier three, tier four yes. sports fans, yes. which are increasingly now uh, seeing greater consumption, mm. uh, their likes, uh, dislikes, and the way they consume sports fans, uh, sports uh, content is a little different from what tier one, tier two fans have done in the past. Uh, and the last healthy uh, and optimistic sort of uh, trend that we're seeing is there are more women sports fans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've seen year on year consumption by women grow uh, from, let's say, single digits to healthy double digits, which is happening. Yeah. Uh, case in point is uh, the recently concluded Women's Premier League, actually, uh, where Dream 11 is a sponsor, and we've seen that data come in where it's almost doubled in terms of interest and engagement. So I think uh, these three or four areas are the ones that, uh, from a Dream Sports perspective, we've been uh, witness to in terms of change. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them we have played an active role and some of them actually we are enabling. 
So there's so much that uh, sports fans can now look out for. Uh, Munish, I'll bring you in. Now, Dream Set Go, as just for everyone's uh, knowledge, is actually a, a premium sports travel and experience platform, and it helps users get access to worldwide sports events. The biggest worldwide sports event is coming up this year, the Olympics in Paris. Um, because what I'm seeing now is there was a time when as a sports fan, any sports, I would behave, have been able to watch it on TV. As the internet came around, I would have been able to read about it. But now, with, like, like with Dream Set Go, you're allowing, you're helping that fan travel from here to Paris, for example, with the Olympics. So tell us a little bit more about the partnership with uh, the IOA, the International Olympic Association, specifically for Olympics. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you know, for the Paris Olympics, uh, you know, we're exclusive in India uh, to ensure that fans across the country can get uh, access to top hospitality uh, for the Olympics and then get a sports experience overall. Um, you know, we want to make sports better. We want to ensure yeah. that uh, each fan gets uh, an experience which goes beyond watching the sport. Um, and we're doing multiple things around that. So uh, we want to ensure that, you know, when our athletes are are performing live and, and contending for yeah. the medal, uh, hopefully a lot of goals. Uh, you know, we can get as many Indian fans to Paris. It's a great destination. It's the first time a lot of different things are happening from an Olympic standpoint. Uh, the opening ceremony is going to be for the first time outside the stadium mm -hmm. on the River Seine. Um, and we want to ensure that across all the disciplines, we can get as many Indian fans out there to support them live and then have uh, great meet and greet experiences after that. So one of the events that we're doing um, post Neera Chopra's uh, yeah. finals, hopefully, and hopefully he wins as well. We're all supporting him. Um, we want to ensure that our clients can get a meet and greet mm -hmm. with Neeraj mm -hmm. in Paris, mm -hmm. hopefully wow. at the India House. Wow. And uh, that gives an amazing, incredible experience to be able to interact with him first uh, and understand firsthand in terms of what his overall thought process was, mind, mindset was, and right. experience was. So, with Dream Set Go, we are helping the sports fan experience sports. Yeah. With uh, everything at Dream Sports, you're building the ecosystem for the sports fan. Yannick, now coming to you. So, with Fancode, I know it's a, it's a, it's a premier destination for sports and uh, every, a lot of things around sports f for consumption of sports. So, uh, case in point, Formula One, I'm a big fan. This year, the minute I got to know that Formula One is available on Fancode, immediately signed up because last year I wasn't able to see it. So, how are you seeing these niche sports or different sports evolve, grow? How are you seeing consumers adopt that? And maybe to, uh, you know what uh, uh, Vikrant's point earlier was, not just in the urban centers, all across India. If you could talk to us, how are you seeing consumers, your, these sports fans, how are they evolving? Sure. Um, so I think, you know, the, the, the premise of what we started fan code was essentially the changing environment in India, as Vikran spoke about, this increasing culture of young children actually taking up sport, where sports is actually permeated into culture right now. The interesting thing was in the last 10, 15 years, where there's more and more investment and more and more access to, let's call it tier one sports events, like the IPLs on 25 different channels, uh, the World Cups are on different events. Everything else wasn't getting enough of attention. So we set up FanCode really to solve that problem of access. And what we did was said that we're going to unlock the potential of digital, which doesn't have to re rely on you know traditional business models of linear television, to be able to cater to these fans across the length and breadth of this country. So when you talk about, whether you talk about Formula One, whether you talk about under-19 cricket, when you talk about Women's Football World Cup, we have the ability to aggregate all these fans across. And the premise has always been that instead of trying to go after and feature an event which gives us 100 million users, we'd rather do uh, 100 events which have a million users each and kind of aggregate that together. And that's how we've kind of built already an audience base of 100 million fans on fan code. Fantastic. And uh, Vikrant, I just want to take, I want you to take this one step ahead because what, like with hearing Yannick out, is also we're talking about, you could say, customization. So in today's world where everything is customized, a fan can have a customized experience and a fan can also be a customized fan by kind of saying that if Yannick is following Kush, when he, I might not be, I might be following another driver in uh, Formula 2, but now I know more about that. Sure. How is a uh, 
uh, uh, dream sports you know how much of your marketing initiatives revolve around the collaboration with organizations so that fans fans sports fans can get closer to those athletes to get to know more about them to uh, get to the, uh, know more and meet them maybe or find out about them yeah sure thanks so there are two parts to uh, you know the question that you sort of spoke about one is this whole personalization bit which is based on a lot of data ins and user insights that we have. You know, Dream11, for example, which is the flagship brand that we have within the Dream Sports portfolio, has over 220 million users. All of them don't behave the same way. All of them could have different likes or dislikes, uh, could show an affinity to for a particular sport. In addition to cricket, for example, Dream11 offers, you know, another 11 sports as well, you know. So this whole bit of personalization, uh, we've also, by the way, based on data insights, uh, done our bit around uh, offering content in vernacular for it. So, so the Dream 11 app, for example, is also available in Hindi and Marathi and kind of. Now, uh, making sure that the best available product, in this case a contest, is available for a particular cohort, as we like to call, and is personalized, is based on extensive amount of data mining and insights that we do. The second part of your question, which is more around um, bringing the uh, fan closer to the experience in terms of consuming that content uh, and how this interoperability within the Dream Sports portfolio, for example, this Dream 11, uh, Yannick spoke about the, the fan code experience, and then uh, Monish spoke about the Dream Set Go. Now, interestingly, even within Dream 11, uh, we have uh, integrated the fan code feed uh, where when somebody is watching or consuming uh, a particular content, uh, in this case, let's say a, a particular uh, contest that is entered on, uh, you could have the, the streaming feed integrated within uh, the Dream11 app. Uh, you could possibly win uh, a chance to get some personalized travel and hospitality experiences from Dream Set Go. So I think there are those levels of uh, uh, finding uh, unique cohorts which show a certain affinity for a particular behavior and th then try and see how we can marry those and serve a best customized and personalized service to those users uh, is what we try and do. Uh, so there's some examples that I gave that we have already launched and I think there are more that uh, we probably want to work on in the future. Fantastic. And I'll come back to you on this because I do want to know what else is in the pipeline for the way ahead. Monish, you know, your company, so Dream Set Go is... I could be in this kind of a sweet spot because on one hand, the sports industry uh, and fans are burgeoning. The travel industry, tourism is burgeoning. You're pretty much in the middle of both sports and tourism. So how are you seeing consumer trends? How have they evolved over the years? What insights can you bring to us? Um, so for us, uh, you know, we are seeing that there's a, there's a great... Uh, outbound tourism that's increasing from, from an India perspective. In fact, it's, uh, uh, we're uh, now in our history uh, as, as India, uh, even surpassing China, South Korea, uh, Japan, in terms of the number of Indians that are traveling and the scale of the outbound market. Uh, within that, we're seeing sports experiences and tourism uh, being the highest uh, in terms of the annual CAGR growth. So we're seeing more and more percentage of the tourism uh, segment being captured by sports tourism. Uh, and this is directly factored by the sales that we're doing and the demand that we're getting. Uh, you know, we had more than 4,000 people that traveled for India for the T20 World Cup that happened in Australia. Uh, we worked with some of the partners and got uh, a lot of Indians to Qatar for the FIFA World Cup. Uh, we saw massive demand in India, of course, for the Cricket World Cup. And we see... Uh, a lot of demand for Indians wanting to go for French Open, Wimbledon, Formula One. Yeah. Uh, so there's, as our disposable income is also rising, people are wanting to uh, capture more and more experiences in life and we're seeing sports mm. leading that way. So the demand for sports experiences and outbound travel is, is significantly increasing and it's, yeah. uh, there's a hunger for, 
for going beyond the game and getting an experience. So you think we're going to be seeing a lot of more entrepreneurs, startups coming up in this space? Uh, I think so for sure yeah. because experiences is something which is uh, mm. uh, definitely, uh, you know, there is, there is a great return on investment and there's Super. a great appetite from the end consumer mm. and sports being at the helm of it, we hope that we capture most of it. Fantastic. Uh, Yannick, a little bit more about uh, fan code. What are some kind of innovations that you've been that have been put in place based on maybe some feedback that you've got from consumers or some changes that you see that are coming about that you've put into place in, in, at Fancode? Can you share that with us? Yeah, I think you know one of the things that we've been as an organization we're very focused is essentially our users, right? Which is the consumer as a direct to consumer company. So we get a lot of live feedback in terms of what works, what doesn't. And we've been able to essentially deliver a lot of uh, elevation and experiences for users unlocking digital. So for example, one of the things that we always heard back from consumers was, why do I as a consumer uh, have to come on a, on a platform and play for the entire year if I want to watch one game? So we kind of uh, innovated around there and we started doing sachet pricing where consumers could come and buy a single game or like you, they could come and buy just Formula One and not the rest of the uh, content on the platform. That really helped us, I think, grow the pie of users who are willing to pay for sport content on, on digital. Uh, another couple of things, right, you know, when we are doing a lot of our streaming and just general feedback on social media was people complained about too many ads, especially in cricket games. So we actually launched a premium feed where users could pay a premium and have an ad-free feed where you could actually continue watching wide shots, the players interacting, and a lot of fans appreciated that and you know, took up to that. I think the amazing ability of digital is that you are able to get feed, uh, you get feedback live and you're also able to experiment. You're able to test stuff out, push stuff out and as an organization we're very focused on doing, experimenting with things but also being very clear. If things work, scale up, if things don't, move on from it. And I think that's something that we've tried to do a lot more uh, in Fancode also. But this is great because FMCG's companies have been famous for as what they call, I think it's called sachet. Sachet pricing, yeah. I don't know, I'm not pronouncing yeah. it right, but giving stuff in sachets. So with shampoos, oil, everything. So this is great to provide this experience in a sachet. Uh, this question, I'll come one by one to all three. The future. So starting with you, Vikrant, what does the future for the fan look like, for the sports fan? What does the future look like here in India? So I think uh, they'll be spoiled for choice in terms of the kind of content they can consume and uh, the ease and the convenience in which that they can consume. So I think that's probably uh, a trend that's going to continue. You know, um, uh, organizations like Dream Sports will do their bits to try and see how we can uh, promote and support the sports ecosystem, uh, you know, in the country. Uh, Dream Sports vision is, uh, you know, make sport better. You know, so what's good for sports is good for Dream Sports, you know, in that sense. Uh, so I think a lot of work will, uh, at least from our side, will happen on uh, trying to even promote sport at the grassroots levels, you know. These could be sports that we may not even, uh, let's say, for example, feature on Dream 11 as a product. Uh, but, but generally, I think, for example, the Dream Sports Foundation does a lot of work in promoting sporting talent. A lot of them are Olympic hopefuls. Uh, uh, hopefully they'll do extremely well in the coming Olympics as well. So I think this larger uh, goal and objective that we have of promoting the uh, sports ecosystem will continue to happen. Uh, the second bit I think really will be around uh, uh, the synergy that uh, we have as a platform and as a group entity with multiple uh, individual companies to see how we can at different touch points try and address different customer needs uh, when it comes to sports consumption. Uh, that probably will be the second sort of uh, big thing that we'll focus on in times to come. Fantastic. Monish, same question for you. Where do you see the f uh, future for DreamSet Go and the industry? So I'll actually take a step back and, and, and tell you my own story. So uh, I used to travel a lot to England in my Deutsche Bank days and uh, uh, I love watching Chelsea Football Club and watch them play. And every time I'd travel, I'd... Uh, I struggled to get tickets. Last minute I tried to find, I didn't know where, I didn't have access to it. And that's where I think the first thought came in saying, we need to solve for this problem. Uh, today where we stand, I think across sports, um, there's a trusted platform, being a part of the whole dream sports universe, uh, to be able to deliver not only access to the clients, but also ensure that you, know, you go beyond that and give them, like for Manchester United, we've got an official partnership, they can watch the first team train 
wow. they can have a legend that can give them a tour personalized mm. tour mm. Uh, of old trafford and it's about putting piecing in these kind of experiences which right now now gives access to mm. very various uh, money can't buy kind of experiences yeah. as we move forward uh, you know i think there's tremendous potential in terms of what we can create even within india in terms of the hospitality experiences for our fans more and more sports are going to happen here we're hoping that in the next decade india is going to be at the center of uh, some of the major sporting tournaments and uh, you know we wish to create the best hospitality experiences for fans fantastic yanik last question to you same future what do you see the future as so i think from a fan perspective and from fan code perspective on the content side right, i think the hyper customization of content and your viewing experience you know it's really frustrating like yesterday as a fan i was watching the mumbai indians as you said the srh game and at, at the break uh, there was a great highlight package of srh bowler batsman just whacking the mumbai indian bowlers all over the place and as a fan i was like this is a terrible highlights package right i'm a mumbai indians fan i want hope right i want to be able to see a customized highlight package which actually gives me hope that mumbai indians can make it they may be a fan of class and who wants to see how he batted and how he performed over everyone else so i think today with ml and ai the ability to use technology to be able to create content which is customized to you individual fans and to be able to use data analytics to be able to feed that content to the right without having them to scroll and search i think wow. that really is the future of fan content and and that's where we hope as fan code to be able to take experiences to fans fantastic so very exciting times lined up for if you are a sports fan if you are not a sports fan i'm sure some of these offerings will click and we'll all find that sport that we are passionate about thank you so much vikrant monish and yanik for this lovely panel discussion thank you so thank much you. lovely audience thank you